Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Bike riding's fun, and this is extreme bike riding. Today we're going to do a little extreme math. And we're going to use bike riding as an example to help you understand the difference between direct variation and inverse variation. Wow. Extreme biking, that's cool. Well, we're going to use biking to kind of explain the difference between direct and inverse variation. And we talked about direct variation uh, in the last lesson. And here's a direct variation problem. You ride your bike for exercise and normally keep your speed at 8 miles per hour. You understand that the longer you ride, the further you travel. So, could we create an equation to represent that? Let's say that we want to find out the distance we travel. Wouldn't that be the speed that you're traveling times the amount of time you travel that speed? Wouldn't distance equal 8 miles per hour times t, the amount of time you travel? Well, yeah, and that's the format of a direct variation. y equals k times x. Now let's create a chart to kind of show how the x values and the y values, or in this case the t value and the d value, vary. If we drive our bike for one hour at 8 miles per hour, we'll have traveled 8 miles. If we travel, ride our bike for two hours at 8 miles per hour, we'll have gone 16 miles. As time increases, distance increases. And when we graph that, it's the traditional direct variation graph. It's a straight line, and it goes through the origin. Well, here's another problem. And I bet you could guess that this is probably not a direct variation. It's probably an inverse variation. You bike to grandmother's a couple times per year. The trip is 8 miles. You time the trip and discover that you can predict how long it will take t for the amount of time it will take for any speed you travel, s for the speed that you're traveling. Well, let's think about that. I got to go 8 miles and it's going to be a multiple of the time I travel times the speed at which I travel. 8 miles is going to be equal to the speed I travel times the amount of time I travel. Now I can rewrite that expression. I can divide both sides by s and have 8 over s equals t. And then I can turn that around and say time equals 8 divided by speed. Now when I chart that, I get a chart that looks just like this. If I'm going 1 mile per hour, to go 8, uh, eight miles, I have to travel for 8 hours. If I'm going two miles per hour, twice as fast, then my time is going to be half the, the time uh, for the uh, one mile per hour or four hours. And you can see that as my speed increases, the amount of time it requires to go eight miles decreases. That makes a lot of sense. Now, if I graph that, I don't get a graph that looks like the direct variation graph. I get a graph that's a curved line. So. The rules we learned for direct variation were that 1, as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. 2, as x gets smaller, y gets smaller. 3, when we graph a direct variation, we get a straight line. 4, that line will go through the origin. And 5, the, the formula for a direct variation is always going to be in this format y equals k times x. An invariation is different though. Number one, as x gets bigger, y gets smaller. Or, number two, as x gets smaller, y gets bigger. They're going in in different directions. It's inverse directions. 
Number three, when we graph it, it graphs as a curved line. And number four, it can be written or must be written in a format that looks like that. Y equals K, a constant, divided by X. Well, let's try a sample problem. Wally World Amusement Park is having a sale. For $100, you can bring a car or a van load of people into the park. Can you create a formula to, to, to determine the cost per person, which we'll call Y, for various size groups, which we'll call X. X is the number of people in the van. Well, let's think about it. It's going to cost $100 no matter how many people we have in the van. Obviously, you want to put as many people in the van as you can because it's, then it's going to be less expensive per person. If you only had one person in the van, it's going to cost $100 for that one person to get in the park. If you had 10 people in the van, it would cost $100 divided by 10 or $10 a piece to get into the park. And we can write that as an equation. We can say that Y, the cost per person, is going to equal the $100 divided by X, the number of people in the van. Now that's the same format I showed you in the previous slide for an inverse variation. Y equals K, which in this case is 100. Y equals K divided by X. Now if we create a chart and, and, and calculate the cost per person for each number of people you could have in the van, you can see that as the number of people in the car increases, the cost per person goes down. And if we graph that, you'll see that we get a curved line. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Determine whether this is a direct or an inverse variation. 3y equals 66 divided by x. Well, I think what we got to do is get it in the format of, we have to simplify it to get it in a format that we can recognize. So, the first thing I want to do is get rid of this 3. So, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. And when I do that, this side of the equation becomes just y, and this side of the equation, I divide the 66 by 3, and I get 22 over x. y equals 22 over x. And that's the format for an inverse variation. How about this one? 6y plus 3 equals 12 divided by x. Is it direct? Or is it inverse? Well, this is kind of a trick problem. But the first thing we got to do is simplify that equation so it's in a format that y equals something. So I got to get rid of that plus 3, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. The left side of the equation becomes just 6y because those 3's cancel each other out, and the right becomes 12x minus 3. Now I need to get rid of that 6. So I'm going to divide the left side of the equation by 6. But then I also got to divide the right side of the equation by 6. And I have to divide both that and that by 6. So now I've got 6 over 6, which cancels each other out and leaves just y, equals, and the 6 goes into the 12 two times. So I've got 2 over x and the 3 goes into the 6 two times, so I've got minus 1 half. So simplified, that equation is y equals 2 over x minus 1 half. Now, that looks exactly like our format for an inverse variation. y equals a constant divided by x. But that changes things and makes it so it's not an inverse variation. And it's not a direct variation. This is neither an inverse nor a direct variation. Try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit your forward key.
the variables x and y vary inversely. Write an equation relating x and y. Well, we've got a graph down here, and there's quite a bit of information on this graph. First of all, they tell us it's an inverse variation, and that's a curved line that looks like an inverse variation. But they give us some other information, too. They give us two points on the line. That point up there, where x equals 1 and y equals 8, and this point down here, where x equals 2 and y equals 4. Can we figure out how to turn that line into an equation? Well, let's think about it. We know it's an inverse variation, so ultimately that equation has to be in that format, y equals k over x. Now, we know two x values, and we know two y values. So we could substitute these y values for that value, and substitute the x values for the x, and we get, in the first case, 8 equals k over 1. And in the second case, we get 4 equals k over 2. Well, can we figure out now what k equals? If 8 equals k divided by 1, then k has to equal 8. And in the second one, 4 equals 8 divided by 2. That's true also. So, we know that k equals 8. Now, if we know that k equals 8, then all we got to do is put 8 in there for the k value, and we've got y equals 8 divided by x. Well, that's our lesson on inverse variation. Now it's time for you to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on inverse variation. After you finish the worksheet, go back to www.mastermath.info and try the online quiz to really test your skills. Be sure to come back again soon. See ya!